So let's begin with the writer or Rider Waite or Rider Waite Smith or Smith Waite tarot deck, which is this one. This is the standard 78 card. Most of the backs look like this and the images are vibrant and bright, colorful, and each is different, and each image is very specific to that card and the meaning of that card and the symbolisms of that card. So the artist, Pamela Coleman Smith, incorporated all types of meanings and symbolisms into all of these. This is the deck that I teach with in my tarot class. I'll show a few more cards. There's Justice, the Sun, you can see there's lots of symbolisms here, the baby on the white horse, the same white horse that Death rides, the pale horse, the red feather means something, the red banner means something, of course sunflowers mean something. We've got the chariot, lots of symbols in this one, the sphinxes black and white, the castles behind him. The square on his breastplate means something. Lots of symbolisms, lots of easy images to recognize in the Rider Waite Smith deck. So this is my number one go-to deck. This is my favorite deck. Another favorite deck of mine is the Winter Waite deck. I love Winter. I love the, Raj the Rider Waite Smith style. And so I had to get this deck. It is by far the best winter or Christmassy or winter holiday deck I've ever seen. These aren't all turned the right way. But you can see how the backs are still kind of standard, that gingham, I think, or plaid type of imagery. There's the Hanged Man, Knight of Wands. There's the Nine of Cups. We've got the Fool all decked out in very Christmassy garb, the chariot, the empress, two of cups, let's see, the sun. Yeah, this one, it has the new year baby on it. I love that. We've got judgment, wheel of fortune is like a candy cane, like a piece of candy or a lollipop, but I love this deck. The lovers, I think I had to get this on Etsy because an artist in the UK, I believe, creates this deck. They also created, I think, the Groovy Weight, which is an awesome deck as well. It's kind of psychedelic with bright, funky colors, which I might end up getting as well. But I love this deck. It's a great go-to deck. It's standard size, exact same size. Everything is pretty much the same as the regular Rider Waite Smith deck, except for the theme. And that is the Winter Waite deck. Another great deck that I own that's based off the Rider Waite Smith template is the Modern Witch Tarot deck. It comes in this beautiful hard box, it comes with a hardcover booklet, detailed. The cards are a great card stock, Rider weight size, Rider weight Smith style. Easy to decipher the meanings, especially if you've learned with the Rider weight Smith system, as my students are and have. So this is a deck I would recommend to them and to anyone who likes the Rider weight Smith style decks. Right now, this deck is only like $12 on Amazon. It's half off. I'm filming this in late June 2021. So this is a fantastic deck. If you are interested in it, again, it is called Modern Witch Tarot by Lisa Sturl. A newer deck that I just purchased is called the Luna Soul Tarot. It comes in a hard box and comes also with a hardcover small booklet with colored images of the cards within it and good meanings. Rider Waite Smith style and size, there's the backs. And it's just got a great pale color palette and I love the imagery. Simple, like yet very cute, very aesthetically pleasing. The miners all have uh, action 
happening, like the Five of Wands, you know what's going on. There's the Eight of Cups. They're telling a story visually, and that's the kind of deck that I love. When the whole deck tells a story. There's the Wheel of Fortune, beautiful. The Moon, Six of Swords, and the Chariot. And again, this is called the Luna Soul Tarot. Another fantastic deck that I love to use is Moon Power Tarot by Charlie Quintero at SixSadGirls.com. Comes in this awesome box. Open it up. It's got a little bit of a booklet, but it is gilded with gold, and the cards are based on the Rider Waite Smith system. Easily recognizable for the most part. The full King of Cups. Just really cool imagery. I love the black in the background. It just, I use this deck a lot for my own readings. I've used it for clients as well. Look at Temperance. Just super cool imagery. Three of Cups. Look at that. They're mermaids floating in space. The Emperor. Knight of Cups, the Chariot, just awesome. I love the color scheme. I love everything about them. Justice, Wheel of Fortune, Magician. Look at that. Two of Cups, Seven of Cups. Really fun deck. Feels just like a Rider Waite deck got that fun slickery coating on it easily shuffleable and I love it that is the moon power tarot and from the same artist we have star power tarot again Charlie Quintero sixsadgirls.com and this is in a funky yellow box with this awesome design on it whoops has a little booklet as well just a little fold-out pamphlet. This is gilded in silver. And these images are super colorful and detailed and amazing. And I could stare at one card for hours, honestly, and find new things in the image. Ace of Cups, Six of Wands, Nine of Coins, The Sun, Seven of Wands. I mean, there's a lot going on in these cards, and this deck is just amazing. Amazing artwork, very imaginative. King of Swords, Ace of Wands. It's just, it's like a mixture of, I don't know, um, humans and aliens and star people. Temperance. Nine of Wands, The Magician. It's just a fantastic, brightly colored deck, easy to use. A little bit harder to uh, decipher the imagery in this one, but once you use it a few times and you get to know the deck, it becomes easier. I love it. This is one of my daughter's favorite decks, and this is the Star Power Tarot. Another basic, very familiar deck is the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. This is the deck in a tin, which I love. I had this deck years ago. I think I gave it away in the regular size, but this one comes in a tin. They're this size, easy to hold, good card stock. I like the feel of them. They shuffle really easily, really well. Not too thin, not too thick. And the images are similar to the Rider Waite with just a different flair. The images in this deck have a little bit of a, let's say, Art Deco, Art Nouveau style, which I love. There's the Emperor, the Empress, Five of Coins, Nine of Cups, Four of Coins. See how they're very similar to the Rider Waite? with just a different style of the artwork. One of my favorite decks and one of my absolute go-to decks. So if you like this style, you can get the 
tin or pocket edition like this or the regular edition. And that is the Aquarian Tarot. Another favorite go-to deck is the Hanson Roberts Tarot deck. And this one that I have is another smaller deck. It's a mini deck. But you can see just a different artist's take on the Rider Waite system. Very bright, vibrant colors, very happy people. I love the expressions, I love the colors. All of the images are good. You can immediately tell what the card is by the image. Four of coins, a little bit of a different take on it, but still you get the gist of it and it's based off the Rider weight style. These are very smooth. There's the backs. They are easy to shuffle this size. This is a fun size too, a little bit bigger than the Aquarian Tarot, a little bit bigger. But yeah, another favorite go-to deck. That is the Hanson Roberts Tarot deck. Another favorite of mine is the Cosmic Tarot by Norbert Loschke. The Cosmic Tarot, it looks like this. It is again, it's standard tarot size and the images are easily recognizable with a different artist's take on them. Four of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, look at how cool that is. The Moon. I love how they, the artist included the fish in this depiction of the moon. We have Justice, Temperance, the Hermit, looks like a hippie, King of Swords, Death, Nine of Cups. I love the people, the faces. There's the Queen of Coins. There's the Queen of Wands the lovers. Very bright, vibrant. It has a little bit of a vintage flair to it. It reminds me of the 70s, 80s, which is when it was created. So I love using this deck. It's a lot of fun. Perfect size. Easy to shuffle. It's another go-to deck, and that is the Cosmic Tarot. One of my favorite newer decks is the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck. It's all gilded with gold, perfect size, beautiful imagery, very much Art Nouveau style, Alphonse Mucha style. Every card is a work of art. Every card is gorgeous. Ace of Swords, you can see how it shimmers, the Devil, the Hierophant, Seven of Cups, there's an extra card in this deck as well called the Well, number 22, beautiful, the Queen of Swords, the Sun is gorgeous. Judgment is gorgeous. This is just a beautiful, beautiful deck. Look at the Queen of Cups. The Magician, the Moon is one of my favorite cards. Great card quality, beautiful backs, easy to shuffle, easily recognizable images, loosely based on the Rider Waite Smith template. That is Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot Deck. Another modern favorite is The Lightseer's Tarot by Chrisanne. And it is a nice size. It's a very thick deck, but very easy to hold in the palm of your hand. This is the backs, what that looks like. And these are very modern depictions of the cards. Very bright colors, very detailed. 
can easily decipher the card's meanings, loosely based off Rider Waite Smith. There's the Wheel of Fortune, the King of Coins. Look at how cool he looks. Just chilling with his dog or his wolf. The Empress, Ace of Wands. I mean, it's just amazing. It's lovely. It's easy to use. Very modern. Beautiful art. I love how there's there's no borders, easy to shuffle, and just get right into your reading. Great deck. That is the Light Seers Tarot. Another favorite deck of mine is the Buckland Romany Tarot. I don't have the box anymore. I have the book and of course the cards, which are our perfect size. They look like this. And the images are detailed and specific. There are details in every card, including the pips. And you know what's going on by looking at the image. Easy to use. This is another of my go-to decks. I've had this for quite a while, quite a few years. I love the imagery, the colors, the vibrancy of the images. They're not all in order, sorry about that. Very beautiful deck, easy to shuffle. I don't even know if it's in print anymore, but that is the Buckland Romany Tarot by Raymond Buck Buckland and art by Lisanne Lake. My favorite new go-to deck is the Star Tarot. And yes, it comes in this big box with a fantastic book, not a booklet, a book. And the cards are a little bit larger than standard tarot size, but nonetheless, they're a good size. Nonetheless, they're easily shuffle, shuffleable and they are gilded with gold. Here's the backs. The colors in this deck are absolutely amazing. This is my favorite modern deck so far. There's the Wheel of Fortune. We have Ace of Cups, beautiful image. King of Cups. We have the Lovers. Three of Cups. Prince of Wands. Just bright, vibrant images, vibrant colors. The Empress, Justice, the World, the Star. I love this deck. Really easy to use. Recognizable imagery. Love that one, Ten of Coins. Smooth cards, good card stock. Again, gilded with gold. Love this deck. This is the Star Tarot Second Edition by Kathy McClelland. Another great deck that I love is the Golden Age of Hollywood Tarot deck. You can find this via US Game Systems um, website, I believe. But this is by Lorelei Douglas, The Golden Age of Hollywood. They are standard Rider Waite, Rider Waite Smith size, plain backs with golden little dots on them. We've got no gilding on this deck, but these are based on movies. So each card is based on a movie. It's pretty intense, it's awesome. There is a, a digital download that you can get instead of the booklet. So we have Power of Cups. Of course, we have Wizard of Oz here as the Knight of Coins. Or no, that's Page. Magic is Page. There's some fun veto cards, which means you're not supposed to know. We've got Rita Hayworth. We've got um, Grace Kelly. Of course, Glinda the Good Witch, Billy Burke. The other Wizard of Oz card. We've got Yul Brenner, The King and I. Oh, gosh, whatever happened to Baby Jane, of course, Betty Davis, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the beloved Audrey Hepburn, of course, and just all kinds of cards 
that are alluding to all different types of movies, of course. This is uh, A Christmas Carol. This is The Graduate. Look at that, Dustin Hoffman. We've got uh, Charlie Chaplin, The Tin Man. We have Sophia Loren as the matriarch or the empress. The son, of course, is Shirley Temple. Yeah, these are beautiful, bright, vibrant cards. And honestly, if I were the creator, I would come up with a deluxe edition. There's Liz Taylor. And I would gild it in gold and put it in a, a better box and a larger booklet and charge twice as much is what I would do because it definitely is a collector's edition. Glory of Wands. This is Sid Charisse. It's the Queen of Wands, Glory of Wands. We've got the African Queen. Just all different types of classic movies here. Of course, the stars Marilyn Monroe, Barbarella. There's the lovers. It's just great. I love it. My daughter and I both adore this deck. Easy to shuffle. Great imagery. And that is The Golden Age of Hollywood. Tarot deck by Lorelai Douglas. Another deck that I really love is called The Druid Craft Tarot by Philip and Stephanie Cargom and illustrated by Will Worthington. It comes in a big box. It has a beautiful large book giving you meanings, telling you a little bit of a story of the cards. The deck is a little bit bigger than your standard tarot. The backs are plain brown color with a little bit of sheen, but it is easy to shuffle. And the images are, of course, what attracted me to this deck. They're very bright, typical of uh, Rider Waite Smith style, but this is a different artist's interpretation, and it's gorgeous. It's got the earthy feel that I love, earth tones, an earthy border an older font, an older type font. There's the sun. Very easy to connect with this deck, easy to work with this deck. So yeah, gorgeous. It's called the Gru Druid Craft Tarot. No tarot card deck collection is complete without a deck by Ciro Marchetti, and my favorite of his is the Tarot Grand Lux comes in a hard box, comes with a small booklet, and the cards are matte, so they're not super shiny, with like a matte black and an ornate border. Those are the backs. Nice thickness, great card stock, and the images are vibrant with lots of details on the pips. There's the Nine of Cups, so you can easily tell a story with this deck. You can easily see what's going on, and I connected to this deck right away. Out of all the decks that I've seen of his, this is my favorite, and although I might purchase another one designed by him, I think this will probably remain my favorite. Look at death, amazing. And again, this is Tarot Grand Lux by Ciro Marchetti. Another of my favorite newer decks is Paulina Tarot. These are standard tarot size, I would say. Beautiful backs. I just love the imagery here. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of details. I love the color schemes. The pips all have imagery. Look, Nine of Swords, you can kind of tell what's going on. You can tell what the card means. It's just, it's a fantastic deck. It's one of my favorites. And I don't think I've used it in a video yet, but I probably will be doing that soon. I love her artwork. She has a few different decks. I think she's coming out with a new one this year as well. But I just love this one. This is my favorite. If you're into this type of artwork, then I highly recommend Paulina Tarot by Paulina Cassidy. 
Another deck that I really enjoy is the Crystal Tarot by Elisabetta Trevisan. This is a little bit smaller than the Rider Waite Smith standard deck, but it's gorgeous. Here's the backs. It's supposed to maybe look like stained glass, and it really is gorgeous artwork. There's the Fool, the Magician, the High Priestess, the Empress, Justice, Strength, one of my favorite cards, the Tower, we've got Eight of Swords, Four of Cups, King of Wands. There's a lot of detail on the pips, um, but I do wish they were more, more detailed and had more action rather than just the cups here. It's a beautiful image, but yeah, I wish they had a little bit more going on on the pips, but all the court cards are beautiful, and of course the trumps are really gorgeous as well. Whoops, I dropped one. There's the Queen of Swords, beautiful. There's the Queen of Cups or Queen of Chalices. Whoops, another dropped another one. We have the Knight of Wands, and this was the Ace of Wands. This is a really beautiful deck. And I do use this pretty frequently. Easy to shuffle, good card stocked, good card stock. This is the Crystal Tarot by Elisabetta Trevisan. Another great, unique deck is the Medieval Scapini Tarot by Luigi Scapini. And it is slightly, I believe slightly taller than regular tarot but it's not hard to handle. It's not gilded, but it looks like it's, it's very shimmery, like a golden shimmer. And that is throughout the deck. There's the Emperor, Eight of Cups. I love the imagery here. There's a lot going on. You could stare at one of the cards for quite a while to notice all that is going on in the card. And it is maybe loosely based off of the Rider Waite Smith template, but in essence, it has its own style, I would say. There's the Ten of Cups, Eight of Wands, the Two of Swords, a little bit different. The Hanged Man is standard. Knight of Wands, very unique artwork, very unique take on the tarot. Five of Wands, Page of Wands, the Hermit, Nine of Cups, Eight of Coins. It's a gorgeous deck. It's got an old feel to it. Actually, the one I have is old from 1985. It's uh, easy, easy to shuffle, good card stock, kind of heavy, but still easy to shuffle. Bright imagery with a little bit of a gilded look, and that is the Medieval Scapini Tarot. Two more really beautiful decks that I chose to purchase were the Botticelli Tarot and the Klimt Tarot, and they are both gilded. So let's take a look at the Botticelli Tarot first. Here's the backs. They're a good size, slightly smaller than the Rider Waite Smith cards. They're gorgeous imagery, they are gilded. They are not following the Rider Waite Smith template for the most part. So it is a little bit tougher to decipher the meanings of the cards. Some of them make sense, some of them don't make a lot of sense, but they are all beautiful. And so I kind of chose to buy this deck simply because of the beautiful artwork and the beautiful cards, although I have used it. A few times. So that is the Botticelli Tarot and here is the Klimt Tarot. There's the backs again with the gilding. Lots of great imagery. I'm told in the style of Gustav Klimt but this was created by let's see does it say here? I don't know if it says here. 
maybe several artists, who knows, but this is definitely an interesting deck. Again, I chose this pretty much as a collector's piece because I love the artwork and I love the cards, but I have used it a few times. So those are the Botticelli Tarot and the Klimt Tarot. Another gorgeous deck that I own is called the Art Tarot Art Nouveau by Antonella Castelli. And these cards, again, a little bit smaller than the Rider Waite Smith's cards, but nonetheless beautiful. Very Art Nouveau style of artwork here. Obviously, that's the title of the deck. But I love this deck. It's gorgeous. The imagery is not really too much like the Rider Waite style imagery, but close enough to where I know what's going on when I look at the image, and they're pretty easily decipherable, I would say. It's a gorgeous deck. If you're into Art Nouveau artwork, imagery, style, this is a beautiful deck to own and to use. Lots of flowers, lots of flow, and lots of bright colors. That is a favorite of mine. That is the Tarot Art Nouveau. So I like doing themed readings for clients and also for YouTube. So I wanted to find a goddess tarot deck and I found one that I love and it's called The Goddess Tarot by Chris Walder. The cards are a little bit wider than a standard deck, but they're kind of the same uh, size as you'd find in let's say a popular publishing company's decks that begins with an H. <laughs> so the backs look like this and the images look like this. Really beautiful images. And I love how, if I can find one, the major arcana. Each card is associated with a goddess or goddesses like the sun here is associated with the Zariah. And death or transformation here is associated with Ukimochi. Beautiful images. We've got, instead of the high priestess, we have Juno. Instead of the devil, we have Nyai Loro Kedul. They're beautiful, easy to read. Um, for the most part, standard imagery that's easily deciphered and understood. And good card stock, easy to shuffle. A great goddess tarot deck and it is called the goddess tarot another great themed tarot deck I own is called the mystic fairy tarot by Linda Ravenscroft text by Barbara Moore these are the perfect size cute backs lots going on very detailed fairy imagery in this deck I love all of the images Easy to understand what's going on for the most part. As I said, very detailed, gorgeous fairies, gorgeous creatures, gorgeous natural settings. There's the Queen of Swords, King of Coins. I like how they're borderless. They just have the titles on them. And yeah, detailed imagery, even on the pips, which I love. If you're into fairies, I highly recommend this deck. It's great. Beautiful, detailed, easy to understand, easy to shuffle, good size. And that is the Mystic Fairy Tarot. So I wanted another themed deck, and I chose The Mermaid Tarot by Lisa Roberts and illustrated by Julie Dillon. Beautiful deck. Comes with a book, a very detailed book talking about gods, goddesses of the sea. Pele is the queen of wands. It's an amazing deck. Namu is the Queen of Cups. Amazing book, amazing deck. I just used this in my pick a card 
for the week. Here's the backs. It's the perfect size. Beautiful imagery, very detailed. Slightly cartoony, but I like that a lot. Easily distinguishable. You can tell what's going on in the imagery. I like how they're borderless. I like how there's a slight shimmer to the background of the titles. Whoops. There's Pele. Yeah, easy to shuffle. Easy to use. Beautiful deck. If you're into mermaids, I highly recommend this deck, and it is Mermaid Tarot. Another amazing themed deck I own is Tarot in Wonderland by Barbara Moore, illustrated by Eugene Smith. Comes in this box. Again, we have a lovely book, not just a booklet, it's a whole story. The author tied it in to Alice in Wonderland, which I'm very familiar with. I actually wrote a dissertation paper on Alice in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz in college. So I'm very familiar with the story. This is a work of genius, in my opinion, how she tied it all into the tarot. And it's a standard size, a little bit smaller than um, the Rider weight. Here's the backs. Imagery is full color, lots of detail. It's another deck that you could just look at it and study it for hours and hours and notice something new every time you looked. Super fun and cute. Lots of recognizable characters from the story from the movie. I know that Disney is coming out with their own official Alice in Wonderland deck. I don't know if I'm going to purchase that one. We'll see, since I already have this one, which is great. It's a possibility, but I love this deck. It really is gorgeous. And the book is wonderful. The book in and of itself is a fun read, I would add. This is a great deck, though. I'm glad I purchased it. It's easy to use. The imagery is pretty easy to understand. You kind of know what's going on. So that was a good purchase on my part. Part of my collection is Tarot in Wonderland by Barbara Moore. Another great Llewellyn deck that I own. Llewellyn is the company that includes the lovely big boxes and the books is Animal Totem Tarot, again by Lisa Robertson who made the mermaid tarot that I showed earlier. This comes not with a booklet, but a book. So it tells a story. It ties in each animal to each card, which is genius in my opinion. And the imagery is gorgeous. There's the backs, whoops, lights are flickering. We have the ace of coins, eight of pentacles. The magician is a fox. Six of Cups. So there is a story in each image. So I loved going through the cards and looking at them and reading in the booklet the meaning of it. I learned a lot about animals. I learned a lot about how they behave, etc. Look at the Five of Cups. Death, of course, as a condor. Nine of Swords, Four of Cups. So it's, it's an experience. You learn about the animals as well with the sticks. So, so if you are an animal lover, I would recommend this lovely deck, which is again, the Animal Totem Tarot by Lisa Robertson. Yet another wonderful Llewellyn deck that I own is Steampunk Tarot by Barbara Moore, illustrated by Allie Fell. This was a gift from my sister, and of course I love it. Again, we have the great book that comes with it. It tells the story 
of the cards and steampunk and the images. And we have the cards, which are perfect size, a little bit smaller than the Rider Waite style, Rider Waite Smith style, King of Cups, Three of Cups, Queen of Swords, Two of Swords, Eight of Coins, Eight of Cups. It's a really great deck. Lots of little details, lots of fun little imagery here. You can read along in the booklet. It tells you a little bit about steampunk. It tells a little bit of a story. And there are characters in the story, which I love because that's what I teach my students, is when you read tarot, you're telling a story. Whether it's telling the client about their past, present, or future. You're pulling it all together, you're putting all the cards together, and you're telling a story. This is a fantastic deck. And again, that is the Steampunk Tarot. Another great themed deck I own is the Sherlock Holmes Tarot by John Matthews and Will Kingen. Comes with a great book. Very easy to understand how they tied in the cards to Sherlock Holmes and all of the characters in the Sherlock Holmes stories. And the cards look like this. They're kind of gilded. 221B, of course, is the backs. And here are the images. You can easily tell what's going on in the imagery. I love that about these cards. I love the different spreads that they have in the booklet as well. Reichenbach Falls, it's the tower. They've got different suits in this deck. They are not cups, wands, coins, and swords. They are, let's see, evidence, deduction, and two more I can't think of at this moment. But um, yeah, these are great cards. They're fun, great images, and yeah, they tie it in really well to the whole Sherlock Holmes anthology or theme. That is a great deck as well. If you're into Sherlock Holmes, then check out the Sherlock Holmes Tarot. One of my favorite decks is the Enchanted Love Tarot. I wanted a tarot deck that was based on romance or love, specifically to use for my love readings for clients. And look no further, this is the one you need to get, The Enchanted Love Tarot, by the amazing Amy Zerner and Monty Farber. They are a power couple, the psychic power couple. It comes with a book, easy to understand, color-coded pages, easy to find the card you're looking for. There are interesting readings in here, different spreads. There is a way to answer a yes or no question with this deck as well. It's super simple, fantastic book. And of course, the cards are gorgeous. Here's the backs. They're standard Rider Waite Smith size. Shells. Let's see. Wings are swords. Shells are wands. Gems are coins. And roses are cups. Beautiful deck, beautiful but simple imagery on some of the cards, the pips, but on the majors and the court cards, of course, Amy Zerner's lovely artwork. Easy to use, perfect size, easy to shuffle. Yeah, I love this deck. That is the Enchanted Love Tarot. I do have another Fairy Tarot deck, Fairy Tarot Cards by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine, which is still in print under Radley Valentine's name. This is a thick deck, very thick. Not too large, almost too large, but not quite too large. It is gilded in silver, it's beautiful. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. And the artist is Howard David Johnson. I love this deck because, well, of the artwork, that's the main reason, and the theme. But each card has a meaning at the bottom. 
So you don't have to look into the booklet. You can just deal a card out and read exactly what it means and it's right there, which is rare for a tarot deck. These are gorgeous images. Lovely fairies, beautiful flowers. They're color coded. I think um, summer might be wands. Autumn is probably coins. What else do we have? Spring might be cups, I'm not sure, but they're color coded and the trumps are a purple color. So we have the dreamer instead of the fool. There's the emperor. Unity, yeah, instead of the high priestess or the um, hierophant. But they are beautiful, beautiful deck, very fun, very easy to use. Good to use for video readings because the meanings are right on the card. I love the backs of these cards. This is probably my favorite card back design of all time, is this one. It's got like the ombre of colors here, the purples and the greens, and then the fairy in the middle. Beautiful deck. That is fairy tarot cards. And similarly, we have angel tarot cards by Dorian Virtue and Radley Valentine, which again still might be in print under Radley Valentine's name. This is, again, another thick deck, and it is also gilded, and also has the meanings of the cards on each card, which makes it great for quick in-person readings, or if you are like me and you're, you're doing a few readings in a row, makes it great for video readings as well for my YouTube readings. The images are gorgeous, and the artist of this deck is Steve A. Roberts. And again, we have the earth, air, fire, water. So the fairy tarot cards had four seasons. This deck, the suits are the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, which actually makes it easy to remember the elements of the suits. Cups are water, wands are fire, coins are earth, and swords are air. It has the angels on the major arcana cards. Azrael here, 13, the sun is Uriel. Metatron's The Chariot, and so forth. Beautiful, fun deck. Gorgeous imagery. I love this deck. If you're into angel-themed cards, then this is the deck for you. It's Angel Tarot Cards. I do have one more angel-themed tarot deck, and that is Guardian Angel Tarot Cards by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. And again, it still might be in print under Radley Valentine's name. But this is different than the Angel Tarot cards. It's Guardian Angel Tarot cards. So here's the backs. And it has a vintage look to it. All of the images are vintage looking. With that vintage theme, doily, polka dots, etc. And there's a long message on each card. So this is really awesome for in-depth readings. It's a perfect um, addition to my collection, and I love using it when I do angel-themed readings. It's a great deck for video readings or just doing readings for anyone or yourself. Beautiful deck, gold and gilded, and that is the Guardian Angel Tarot card. Another deck I've had for several years is the Thoth or Toth, Thoth Tarot. Here's the box, Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck. These are larger cards, but they're made very well, good card stock. Here's the backs. The images are very different than the Rider Waite. They're a little more abstract. The artist is Lady Frida Harris but it does have little keywords on the bottom to help. So when you're doing readings, if you can't really tell what's going on, you don't remember what card that is, especially the pips, makes it a little bit easier because there's keyword, one keyword or two keywords on the bottoms of the pips. There's the hanged man. See, the two of coins is change. We've got adjustment or temperance. Six of Cups, Pleasure, 
There's the moon. Four of swords is truce. There's the prince of discs, queen of swords. Seven of swords is valor. And there's symbolism in here. Quite a bit of symbolism, I would say, in these cards. You really do need to read through the book to understand everything that's kind of going on. But I love this deck. This is a go-to deck as well. This is kind of one I want to get deeper into, into a reading. And I want to know something that maybe scares me or I'm afraid to know what it is. This deck is very reliable in that sense. And that is the Thoth Tarot. And I recommend getting the big book with it as well. Another deck that I picked up is the Magical Nordic Tarot by Jane Wallace, an artist, Tracy Emin. It opens like this. There's a great booklet in here. It gives you the meanings of the cards. And here are the cards. Beautiful backgrounds. I love the colors. I love the imagery. And here they are. These also have little keywords down here on all the cards, not just the pips. It's good that they have the keywords because the pips are quite plain. See, there's just the two cups there rather than the two people each holding a cup. Strength, we have courage, seven of cups. See, there's just seven cups there and choices. Death, four of wands, happy occasions. So it has the keywords or phrases here. The artwork is really different. It's really soft, um, yet detailed. And the book kind of tells a little bit of a story about Nordic culture, Norse, Norse gods and goddesses, etc. Two of Wands is unity. The sun is happiness. Ace of Coins is luck. I like the color scheme of the cards, very soft. I love this deck. It's a really nice deck. And that is the Magical Nordic Tarot. Another great deck that I own is called the Muse Tarot by Chris Ann, who also created the Lightseer's Tarot, which I love. This deck is more, it, it leaves more to be interpreted by the reader. It's very um, non-typical imagery very creative imagery, beautiful imagery. I love the backs too, I just have to mention that. I love the imagery of this deck. The suits are different. They are materials, inspiration, voices, and what's the emotions, of course. So the suits are a little bit different, but the images are so gorgeous and thought-provoking, and you can gain something different each time you look at the same image. You know, in a reading, let's say you draw this and this card for someone, and it means one thing, and you might draw those two cards for a different person, and you might see something else for them. So it really does leave it all to your intuition, which I love. Very creative deck, based on creativity and the creative process and the intuitive process. One of my favorite um, alternative type art decks, and that is the Muse Tarot. I cannot forget about my tiny fairy tarot by, I believe this is Lo Scarabeo, yes. Tiny deck, this is a tiny deck, but they have a regular size deck as well. This is super cute if you're into fairies, adorable, very detailed images bright and these tiny decks are easy to shuffle this way you just kind of go like this with just two fingers and they're lots of fun super cute that is the fairy tarot so another beautiful deck from the amy zerner monty farber powerhouse couple is the enchanted tarot and this i think is the first edition They've come out with a second edition, maybe a third edition by now, I'm not sure. But it's beautiful. The cards are a bit long, but you can shuffle them easily overhand like this, or like this. 
The artwork is based on her tapestries, her tapestry art. Detailed images, the pips are all detailed as well. There's nothing boring about this deck, that is for sure. Hearts are cups in this deck. Beautiful deck, one of my favorites. Look at that death card, that's one of my favorite cards. Ace of Swords. So if you love this type of artistry, I recommend the Enchanted Tarot. Another deck that I have is called The Good Tarot by Colette Baron reed and I love her artist, Jenna Della Grataglia. I have quite a few of their Oracle card decks, which are fantastic, hands down fantastic. But I will say, I am not super excited about this deck. I just found it a little bit hard to connect to it. I do love the borderless images, but I just, I feel like there could be more detail because I, when I look at this, I have no idea what it means. You know, four of water, what does that mean? Don't know. Ace of earth, not sure. It's just, it's not detailed enough for me, even though it's beautiful. It's a beautiful deck. I just, I don't think I've ever used it. Maybe when I first got it, I used it a few times. And I love the artwork again. I love their Oracle cards, but I did not really connect to the deck, even though it is beautiful. And that is the Good Tarot. Another deck that I got is the Akashic Tarot by Sharon Ann Klinger and Sandra Ann Taylor. I am a fan of Sandra Ann Taylor's Oracle cards. Her Energy Oracle deck is a go-to deck. I've used it hundreds of, hundreds of times. It's fabulous. It's always spot on. But I had a hard time connecting to this deck, mainly because it just doesn't seem like a tarot deck to me. It just it seems like an Oracle card deck trying to be a tarot deck. I just couldn't really get into it. Therefore, the few times I've used it, I've used it more like an oracle card deck, like a one card pull. You know, I'd pull one card and I would look up the meaning. So it is beautiful, the artwork's lovely, but it's not one of my favorites as a tarot deck. But maybe you would connect with it even more. Everyone's different, it's definitely beautiful. I love the idea of it tying it into the Akashic too. That is the Akashic Tarot. Two more decks that I've had quite a while, for quite a while. First, there's this deck, Tarot Cards, and it's a Marseille type deck, I guess, or a Swiss. Let's look inside, I think it's Swiss, maybe. Swiss made cards, okay, but US game system. Swiss made cards. And this is what they look like. Pretty plain backs, pretty small deck. I do like the images though. It's just standard, it's old, it feels vintage. It's hard to connect fully because the pips, of course, just show the, the symbol of the card. But I do like the majors. And I do like the court cards. Kind of a fun deck. And I have this deck, Tarot Classic, which is the Marseille deck, I believe. It's the same size as the other, same type of plain back, and that's what these images look like. A little bit thicker than the other deck, and again, the pips just show the symbol of the card. There's no action in the pips. So I really don't use these too often. I used to use these all the time, but now that we have more rider rate weight type cards, I use those more often but they are nonetheless a part of my collection.